welcome everyone to another exciting adventure with RB Outdoors. Please join us today as we hike in deep into the Alpine Lake Wilderness to Lake Milamore. We've got another five miles to go. Let's hit it. Well, good morning everybody. Uh, day one of going to Lake Milamore. So last night uh, we got off work early. We hit the trail about one o'clock. We did our first five miles in about three hours. And then we did the steep part. And I'm looking at my Gaia app here. And we did 1.8 miles and it took us three hours and 50 minutes. And let me tell you, it is steep. And basically it is a unmanned trail, abandoned trail by the Forest Service. Being over logs, we had to take our packs off. Several think, times. A couple times. It was intense. That's all I can say. It was so intense and it hurt. <laughs> and we even, I mean, it was trail finding. Thankfully, Rich is so good at keeping the trail in front of him. Um, there were times that we'd go over a log or through some scrub brush and then go, well, where'd the trail go? And so there was the figuring out where's the trail. Oh, there it is. And uh, it was, it was grueling. I don't know if you can see the how many switchbacks and <laughs> inclines they are but like i said the first five miles we did in in three hours and it took us <laughs> over three hours to do 1.8 miles but guys <laughs> this is going to be worth it once we get to lake milamore and the reason i'm calling it lake milamore is because this is an actually a no-name lake um and I'll tell you the reason why I call it Lake Mile or More later. It's a whole lot further than a mile or more away. It's it's a little it's probably a little over eight miles away. But uh, yeah, we just got done uh, having some coffee, and we're gonna pack up. We've got two more miles to go, and the next time you see us, um, we're gonna be either really close to the lake or at the lake. Catch you later. So we're not near. Uh, any water sources just yet so this is what we uh, made our coffee out of this morning we did run into quite a bit of snow coming up the trail it is a uh, fourth of July weekend by the way so I just uh, carve out the snow chunks with the big boy 2000 and that's what we had for coffee this morning there's that aha moment A little hazy, almost smoky today. No fires that I'm aware of, but uh, still absolutely gorgeous. This is why we do this. The reason I call this Lake Milamore is because the fish are so big, when they jump out of the water, you can hear their splash for a mile or more. Well, everybody, after a brutal eight plus mile hike off trail, snow fields, googe. Uh oh. Yes. Somebody. Oh. oh sorry, hun. Somebody just saw Lake Milamore. Lake Milamore. So, we were actually worried about the lake not being totally thawed, but okay. it looks that way. That one cold breeze though. And that point out there is going to be our camp. You're all right. That's it, yep. We got it. Oh. Okay, everybody. We just finished having lunch. We just rigged up our rods. Brenda's going to get the first cast. And I'm already betting money. First cast, first fish. So, here we go. Oh, 
looks like second cast. <laughs> You had a cut. You had. You I did. did I yeah. saw that. Yeah. There. There we go. Cast number five in a nice cutthroat. Oh! Oh! Chip! Chip! Oh! And that was a caught fish. That was a caught fish. That's what you get for using flies. Okay guys, quick tip for backpacking. We never go out without a complete, total change of clothes. Everything, you get up to camp, you're wet, you're get chilled. We take everything off and put on an entire new set of clothes. They're our camp clothes. So we've got our hiking clothes and our camp clothes. Even the hat, even a stocking cap we like to bring. Uh, to sleep in especially and this time of year even though it's July 4th you just don't know what it's going to be we've been wearing our stocking caps at night so always bring a complete and total change of clothes got it fish on Nice fish. Nice cutthroat. We're having a fish fry tonight. That's a fatty. Dang. That's heavy. That's the biggest one yet, babe. Oh my God, it's heavy. Okay, everybody, I got the fish cleaned. We got a little campfire. We're in this little kind of protective rock wall here to try to get us out of the wind. Man, we just had some huge gusts, but so I just got a little uh, cooking oil that I'm going to put on here. A little Mrs. Dash. It's got some great herbs and spices in there. Oh yeah, there we go. Then I got my own blend of garlic salt, black pepper, kosher salt. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, about 10 minutes or so in the fire and we will have fish. All right, I just pulled the fish off. It is looking done. Oh yeah, look at that. I was trying to burn my fish bones, try to keep the smell down. Now it's time to eat. Okay everybody, you sauce cooked the fish last night on the foil and today for lunch we're going to cook it two more different ways. We're going to cook the fish on a flat stone rock and on a stick as soon as this fire gets ready. So that's three ways that you can cook trout without using a pan in the back country. All right, I, I put some uh, canola oil on this rock and now I'm just going to season up some fish. A little Mrs. Dash. A little kosher salt, black pepper, and garlic. Oh, we got a sizzle. All right, we'll just see how that does here. I'm thinking about four to five minutes maybe per side. Uh, we'll see, I'm not sure exactly how hot that rock is, but we got a good sizzle, so that's a great sign. Okay, fish on a rock is about ready to come off because it's done. Appetizer number one, for lunch. Fish on a rock. Next one in line, fish on a stick. All right, I'm calling this baby done. And believe it or not, the skin is actually kind of crispy. Look at that, fish on a rock. Done. Wow, that is good. Wow, I'm telling you that uh, seasoning pack that Mrs. Dash with the little the lemon rind in there is absolute, in my opinion, a must. All right, I gotta feed my camera crew because she has to try this. All right, there you go, fish on a rock. This portion of RB Outdoors is brought to you by The Cured in Leavenworth, Washington. So this is how we make our slurry. We put uh, lake water in our sea knock bag and then some snow. I gotta tell you, it's more like ice because it's very cold. Then we seal this baby up. And then we put our water filter, our Sawyer wa water filter, at the end of the bag. Right here. And then we have fresh, clean ice cold water. Okay everybody, so this is part of Brenda's hydration station in the outback, okay? So, you know, I don't leave home without my gin. The problem is always when we go backpacking, what do you put with it? Because you can't carry the juice in, it's a whole big thing. Our dear friends and realtor, Nicole, uh, put us on to these taboos and I gotta tell you we were a little skeptical but at the same time I was excited because she was into the sugar-free aspect which I am into and rich as well but uh, look at this 
this is it. This, gin, and water. And so Rich has got our water slurry going on here. We're fortunate, I guess, <laughs> we're gonna say we're fortunate in that we have snow behind us here. And he is able to make us a nice ice slurry going on there that we're gonna filter. Um, I've already got tabs in there. We're doing mojito right now. And uh, then we're gonna pour in the gin and rut row, this is the end of it. So <laughs> it's gonna be the best drink of the whole trip right here. Just put in your shot of gin. Get the last little dribbles out of that. Yes. I packed this weight in. I'm not packing it out. I'll carry the garbage, of course, but yeah. Anyways, and then we just add some water. Now, I did add a little bit of lime. I carried a lime in as well. Um, and so we do have a little bit of lime in there that I have already put in. And... Gonna squeeze our water in there. I gotta tell you, there's nothing like a nice ice cold cocktail when you're out backpacking. And Taboos has made it possible for us. You can buy these on Amazon where we got them. And uh, cheers. Okay, and here's the third and final way to cook a fish without a pan, fish on a stick. Not my real preferred method because you, you, tend, you have a risk of the fish falling in the fire. I've lost two of my support sticks so far as this thing's cooking, but uh, hopefully <laughs> this will not just fall into the fire. Okay, the fish on the stick looks done. Just pull her off. I lost both my su support sticks like I thought I might. If you don't have a rock or foil or a pan, you can still do it on a stick. Again, not my preferred method, but it still works. Well, good morning. It's Sunday morning, July 5th. Finally, after three days of constant howling freezing cold wind we have a beautiful calm morning and we're going to go out to our little own private island which we had not to enjoy very well because the wind would howl across and i'm going to call it breakfast island because we're going to have our last breakfast here this morning It is a bit tricky to get out here. You got to get down on your butt on some logs. And we're on. That's that's how you get across. Morning everybody. I'm excited to be taking some layers off. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a big island, but she is all ours. It's absolutely gorgeous out here today. up here what an amazing trip we've had could have done without all the wind the last couple of days but this morning totally made up for it we woke up and it was just crystal still water and uh, now we got a little bit of a breeze but it's been an amazing trip <laughs> 
slayed tons of fish, so made it worth all the work. We were estimating that we caught probably around 20, 22 fish, and I think we kept six or seven. We had uh, fish for lunch twice, dinner for twice, and released all the others. So all in all, good trip, but you can't control Mother Nature and the wind, but uh, anyway. It was exciting to be able to take all our layers off today yes. <laughs> and get our shorts back on. It was the first time in, <laughs> I think, history that I wore long johns for three days straight at the 4th of July. Yeah. So. Yeah. It's going to be a long trek out, probably another six hours or so today, but it's beautiful and we only have a little bit of uphill. <laughs> Most of it's the downhill, but um, yeah, we'll take you along and we'll see you at the truck. Well, everybody, we made it down. It took us eight hours to do about nine miles, but three of that is cross country. Um, <laughs> it was a brutal hike, <laughs> brutal hike. We are back. See the truck in the foreground there. Um, there were times coming down the hill that we were like, how did we come up this hill? Yeah. It was so steep. It was so steep. I'm like, I don't even remember. <laughs> go. I mean, uh, anyway. Long we made it out. We made it out. <laughs> <laughs> and here's a quick tip. What we do, and everyone should do, we can't figure out why more, more people don't, but always have a cold beverage in, the, in your truck or vehicle when you get back. We put these on ice in our cooler when we left on Thursday night. And uh, our beverage of choice is of course, Icicle <sighs> Brewing Company's Kickstand Ale. It's amazing and oh man, we've earned this, right? So anyway, quick tip, always bring a cold beverage and kick back and relax for a quick second before you head out. It makes that last mile knowing that you have this in the cooler pretty good so true motivation so true yes okay everybody if you like this video please give it a thumbs up don't forget to subscribe because we are coming out with some really really cool stuff here in the next couple months and we'll see you soon down the trail these are the battle-born legs of the RV Outdoors Northwest Expedition Crew. Going to the extremes so you don't have to.